So many of you know I am a huge Star Trek fan. Uh, and I think about the magical technologies in Star Trek as sort of, if you would, inspiration for uh, our future X prizes. And I'd love to have a replicator. Just would love to have a replicator. Well, the closest thing to a replicator is what we're in the middle of now, which is the digital manufacturing revolution of additive manufacturing and 3D printing. And here to speak on 3D printing and augmented manufacturing is one of the most eloquent and visionary and well-dressed thinkers on the topic that I know. Uh, a past CEO of 3D Systems, uh, a venture capitalist uh, named by popular mechanics as one of the top 25 makers and by fortunes one of the top 50 business leaders, a core faculty member of SU, on my board of directors at the XPRIZE Innovation Board member, please welcome to the stage the founder, chairman, and CEO of Exponential Works, Avi Reichenthal. Woo. And I can only add to that still a disappointment to his mother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about uh, augmented manufacturing. Uh, what I want to tell you a little bit is that we have an incredible place in Ventura called Exponential Works, where we are actually making the future of manufacturing through investments in next generation robotics, AI, and additive manufacturing. We just took the advice from Peter that the best way to predict the future is to try and make it. So we're putting our own experience our own financial resources to work in trying to make a difference. We'll talk about that a little bit. But what's the big deal about augmented manufacturing? After all, 3D printing has been around for four decades. You know, it's not an overnight success. It's been around for a long time. Uh, but in fact, more has happened in this space in the last 24 months than in the last 24 years. There are five times more 3D printing companies today than five years ago. And there is a very interesting phenomenon. While the publicly traded companies in this space, my former company included, are rising in valuations uh, at the moment, you know, kind of reflecting a recovery and accelerated adoption in manufacturing. If you look at the cumulative valuation of the early stage pre-revenue and modest revenue companies, cumulatively they boast a higher valuation than all the public companies combined. Why is that? The answer is that all eyes are on real manufacturing, what I call augmented manufacturing, in many different fields. And because the size of the prize, the TAM, the total addressable market, is poised to increase from about 20 billion of actual revenue in the next two years to a TAM of about 20 trillion, which represents all the opportunities in manufacturing in personalized healthcare and other industries that we'll talk about. So when we think about what is augmented manufacturing today, we think first and foremost about the input, which has undergone a significant disruptive transformation, and that's design. We're in a stage in which we're going from design to generative design, computer generated design. 3D printing has been disrupted entirely in the last few years, and we'll talk about some of the core movements and their impact. Artificial intelligence, of course, and its applications from design to manufacturing, digital twinning, and quality play a big part here and the mixed reality of the design guidance, but also maintenance, repair, intelligence, service, all coming into play. And as Peter loves to say, the convergence of this technology create new possibilities. 
make no mistake about it, in the next decade, fortunes will be made and lost with this technology, and not necessarily just by the companies that are commercializing, demonetizing, and democratizing, but by all the businesses that, that will be created, transformed, and also disrupted and fail. Let's start with generative design, one of the most exciting development with infinite computing in the cloud and with ubiquitous connectivity, computers can design. When computers can design, they can uh, use algorithms that are taken from nature's playbook. Uh, because the most interesting structures in the world were already patented by nature. When you can lightweight, you can save money, you can increase sustainability, you can consume less energy, you can be more efficient, and you can increase function. The manufacturing side of it has some interesting applications and some limitations, okay? The interesting applications are taking really inexpensive plastic 3D printers and putting them into banks to create instant, low volume, completely flexible manufacturing. It go it's good as far as it goes, uh, and it can get you to some small enterprise manufacturing, but it's not really a scalable or a reliable solution. Some companies are integrating robotics. You heard from my good friend Rob Nail that robotics are becoming ubiquitous and inexperienced. You can see a nice reduction to practice here of companies that are integrating robotics to be able to build bigger size parts, use them for spare parts or for exotic automobiles. It's an interesting niche and it has its limitations. One of kind of the, the killer apps that are coming is the use of digital materials and new chemistries in what's called uh, faster continuous building. You can see uh, some examples here from my former company, 3D Systems, and from another very successful unicorn, Formlabs, where they are integrating robotics with photo curable materials to make plastic parts. Metal is the hottest space here because with metal you can laser melt real alloys and make real metal parts. There have been more investment and more deployment in automotive and aerospace in the last two years than in the last 20 years. And there are even interesting casting mimics in which you can use binder to bind together metal powders and then sinter them. Uh, and that could be used to begin to replace and displace castings. Uh, and that's another interesting unicorn uh, that uh, Rick Fulop is running called Desktop Metal that already raised in excess of $300 million and is worth probably nearly $2 billion today as, a, as largely a pre-revenue company. Uh, there are interesting companies that are taking what Rick Fulop is doing to the next level. This is an Israeli company that is actually claiming that they can jet liquid metals and ceramics, which means they can get to lower resolutions and accuracies. And with all the capabilities in making metal and plastic parts, what about electronics? What about making the parts functional and smart? We're going to have about 50 billion connected devices on the market in the next couple of years. They will all require antennas and sensors and encapsulation. And companies like Nano Dimension are solving for that problem. And finally, we have the whole material science side of it, which is exploding in terms of functionality. Uh, we can already print today with metamaterials, with intelligent structures. We see a line of sight to self-healing and self-compiling or self-assembly of materials using 4D printing. And of course, there is a whole 
field of electrochromatic and interactive surfaces, which will completely redefine how products are made and designed. So what's ahead? What's coming? What's in front of us? Uh, first and foremost, in the next five to 10 years, we will be printing convincingly not only robotic mimics, but we will print organs and we will print bones and we will have the spare parts to go with the kind of uh, longevity that Bob Hariri is promising. Uh, and you can see the beginning of how materials and robotics are coming together uh, to give us a humanoid-like functionality in ways that truly mimics the gestures, the utility, and the functionality. The biggest breakthrough to me is the era of the autonomous designer. We have now interfaces in our labs in which I can talk to a computer. She is my personal designer, my AI designer, and I can change and morph parts, optimize them and lightweight them in real time. Speed barriers will be broken in the next five to 10 years. Uh, you can see a supersonic deposition system here from Australia, a new metal jetting system from HP, and one of our crowd jewels, Nexa 3D, which we're gonna unveil in a few months uh, at about 10x the speeds that are available today. Manufacturing as we know it will be reimagined. This car is slated to go into production. It's the first fully 3D printed, lightweighted EV. Supply chain will be interrupted because Peter is talking about replicating. I think about teleporting. When you can teleport matter, it has no borders. So UPS and FedEx, watch out. Trump, rethink your trade war strategy because there are no borders to cross here. Architecture will be, and construction will be reimagined. Disabilities will turn into superpowers through the combination of AI sensing and robotics in a way that will be so powerful and so compelling that some fully functional and able people might want to augment and enhance their functionality. And down the road here by LAX, there is a new company called Relativity that is building rockets to deploy satellites into space by combining thousands of parts into few and by 3D printing the entire engine, rocket, and fuel tank. They've already had 85 successful trials. And yes, my fellow visioneers, after some 5,500 years, even the wheel is being reinvented. Every tire company around the world is racing to take a page out of nature's playbook and completely reinvent the wheel. So I'm gonna leave you with this. There has never been a more exciting time to be in 3D printing. This is now, it's here, it's gonna be huge, except maybe for next year. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, uh, every time I hear you, and every time I see you, besides just... Uh, Do you like our fashion yeah, consultant? We, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm blown away by the potential, right? This is, this is 3D printing going down in detail and molecular assembly coming up, and they'll meet sometime soon. So uh, let's roll a video right now, and one of the things that we asked you to do was to create our trophies for Friday and Saturday night. Uh, can you tell us what, uh, what we got here? Yes, Peter always asks the impossible, you know, make me trophies. We ran a competition actually for yes. Hero X. Yeah, we did. We printed the winner on a metal printer. 
and it's being rushed here as we speak. I think we're going to take delivery in about five minutes. All right, perfect. <laughs> uh, and, and here you see the, uh, uh, you'll see the final product uh, tomorrow night and Saturday night. Uh, but, pal, more important than that, uh, you have an announcement to make, uh, which is very substantial. I just, you just told me about it a few days ago, and I said, let's announce it to the... To the uh, could you please tell us what you've yes. amazingly donated? I mean, here's the deal, Peter. You keep coming to me all the time, and you're asking for my help. <laughs> and I decided to make it easy on you. Okay. Okay? Exponential Works will give you, and the XPRIZE organization, and every team now and in the future, free printing services for as long as I live, any team, at any price, at any cost, until we crack the code and deliver abundance. Amazing. <laughs> I, I want to I just, I just want to uh, reiterate what I heard, which was uh, your company, Exponential Works, is going to, if a team registers for an XPRIZE, and in building that X Prize, they need 3D printing services. You're gonna donate that even free if it costs charge. even if it costs millions of dollars, we will donate it Amazing. free of charge. Amazing. For as long I, as I live. For as long as you live, yeah. which I'm working on. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Avi Reichenthal. Thanks, guys. And Exponential Works. Thank you, buddy. Thank, Thank you, you, brother. Yeah.